Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I have a quick card video for you, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I'm working with some Simon Says Stamp Supplies. I have the Etched Layered Daisy Stem die set. I also have an old stamp set called Happy. It's happy in all of the things. And then I'm working with this Cartabella Home Again paper pad. This is one I just picked up. And I have chosen a piece of pattern paper from that pad, as well as some coordinating card stocks. I have a dark green to be the mat and a gray for the card base. The first thing we need to do is score that card base in half. This paper is currently four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall. And we're going to score that at five and a half to create a top folding portrait style USA two size card, which means it is four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. Once I have that folded, I'm going to burnish the edge really well because this is a heavy duty card stock and I want it to lay flat. The dark green paper is going to be a mat and I want to trim it with the slightest border. So it's going to, it's currently four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm going to trim it down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So it's just going to have a tiny border of that gray card base peeking around the edge. Um, don't always do this, but I felt like for this particular um, plan I had in place, this was going to be the, I just like that gray and I wanted to use it, let's be honest. <laughs> but really I felt like it needed just a little, the pattern paper needed a little something to separate it from that gray card base. The next thing I'm going to do is trim this one down, the pattern paper, and I will take it to four by five and a quarter inches. So um, another eighth of an inch down. So the borders between these layers are going to be very small, but I think it adds just enough extra to push this card from, from awesome to really awesome. <laughs> I have already cut out the stems and the flowers. Now this is a two piece or actually a three piece die set. It has the stem and two sections of petals. And the top section of petals has the uh, embossing for the center of the flower. And then the bottom one, the bottom section does not have that embossing. I actually cut the bottom section twice for each flower. So I have three layers of petals for each of the three flowers I'm going to use. So I've pulled out this silicone mat from Waffle Flower to ink up my the centers of my flowers on because the paper doesn't slide and it doesn't make a mess all over my um, work surface. So you can see that the first three petals that I added ink to, this is a little tiny blending brush and of my favorite things, daffodil ink. I am adding ink to the center of the back petals as well so that that yellow kind of radiates from the center of the flower on all three layers. Now I am going to assemble um, one flower on camera and the other two I will do off camera because it did take me a little bit of fiddling to figure out how to layer the three sets of petals together when the die was designed for two. I just wanted a fuller flower. So it's designed for the top layer, the top flower or top set of petals, there we go, to kind of nestle in between the like the open spots of the bottom layer of petals. And it looks good, but I wanted more. <laughs> Isn't that the way it works? We always want more. So it did take me a minute to kind of figure out the best approach to making sure I had no big spaces and um, that the petals were looking nice. So now that I have all of those petals and flowers assembled, it's time to start putting this card together. I'm just going to use my um, ATG double-sided adhesive. Um, this is my adhesive of choice because, or double-sided adhesive of choice. I mean, I have lots of adhesives, let's be honest. But I like this one because the ATG um, holds a lot of adhesive. I feel like the little tape runner thingies run out all the time and I'm constantly buying refills. So that, that is why I still like 15 years later continue to buy refills for my ATG because it lasts forever. <laughs> okay, not forever, but it lasts a lot longer. <laughs> okay, I'm, I've got my card base sideways here so that I can see three sides at the same time. And I'm just kind of very carefully, I'm taking my time because with small borders, 
you'll really be able to tell if it's not at least visually centered. Same thing with my pattern paper mat. I'm just going to slide it up to the top there and kind of hold it in place and check my borders on the three sides I can see and then lay it down. Now, my plan here is to make a grouping of flowers on the left side of the card. Um, what I did not take into account was that these are kind of big flowers. <laughs> so they're not really going to just cluster around the left, the really left side. They're going to kind of take on the whole thing. <laughs> so I have my stems already cut out as well. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about this because I want to plump up those petals. I'm going to take my bone folder and um, just curl in all the petals. On the first flower, I did each layer independently and then realized that was nonsense and shenanigans because I don't need to do it. I can, I can do all three layers at one time and still have a, have a nice look. <laughs> so that's what I did on the next couple of flowers. See how much faster that went when I wasn't trying to do each petal individually? <sighs> you know, it's so funny because I have been making cards and paper crafting well, heck, my oldest is turning 27 this year, and I started scrapbooking when she was a baby. So I've been using paper for a lot of years to make pretty things. And I still sometimes surprise myself at the, the shenanigans I try to come up with. <laughs> okay, I'm going to speed up this part because you saw how I wanted them placed together. So now it's just an assembly issue. I did need to trim the stems of these um, daisies down just a little bit. They were... Um, I didn't want them to hang off the bottom of the card. That's all. I am using my reverse clamp tweezers and some Tombow Mono, Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Words are hard. And I'm just kind of trying to remember where I had these placed. The um, tricky part is that, well, A, I didn't take a picture, so I don't know how I had them laid out. But also, because they are multidimensional and I've fluffed up those petals, I can't really use the press and seal trick to put them back where I originally had them planned. So the finished layout is probably a little less overlappy than the first original layout, but that's okay. Um, I couldn't figure out, <laughs> you saw how I'm putting these, the glue on these little stems. I mean, they're tiny little stems. And I'm, oh, it was an exercise in patience, that is for sure. Because, you know, I've said it before, liquid glue and I were frenemies. It has a use in my craft room. I use it probably on almost every card. But man, it causes me consternation because it makes my fingers sticky and then everything sticks to my fingers. And I'm trying to use my tweezers more so that my tweezers get gluey, not my fingers. But, you know, there's that. <laughs> Anyway, now that we've got that third flower stem down and the third flower down, we can go ahead and start thinking about what kind of card I want this to be. And I'm always in need of birthday cards, so I'm going to be using this happy stamp set and making a happy birthday sentiment banner to go across the bottom of the card. Now, there are three, four happies in here, and I opted to use that um, really um, long, scripty happy and then the tiny birthday word. So this stamp set has happy all the things. There's ever after, boy, girl, baby, wishing you lots of birthday for both of you, Christmas, anniversary, graduation for you, holiday, sending thoughts. And then, yeah, four different happies. So this is a literally could be anything sentiment set. So I am still deciding... <laughs> Which which combination of words? For a little while, I thought I would say which wishing you lots of birthday happiness, but that just seemed like a a lot for the outside of a card. That's you know, when you have that big of a sentiment on the outside of the card, you're expecting something profound on the inside. Let's be honest. And very often, when I send out birthday cards, they're already going in the mail late. So profound is is um, set aside for get this in the mail right now. <laughs> so all of my friends and family members who are watching this video and haven't received their birthday card yet, even though we are approaching the middle of April and I probably had six people I supposed to send cards to by now, I put them in the mail yesterday. So sorry. Love you. <laughs> I started by stamping the birthday at the bottom because I wanted the happy to be above it, but I wanted it to be centered. So I have a piece of just white cardstock here and I've kind of sort of centered that birthday 
um, as best I could visually in the middle of that cardstock because you all know I don't measure things like that. You know, it would be really cool if I just broke down and bought that grid mat that Simon's a Stamp has to go with your Misty so you can make sure that your sentiments are straight and centered. Um, but that would be way too easy. Also, I have the sticky mats, which I guess that only helps with the paper, not the stamp so much. But, you know, it's all good because it looks centered and I have that happy script and I trimmed it out and I matted it on a piece of that dark green cardstock off camera because, well, you couldn't see what I was doing anyway because I'm zoomed in too far. You know, that's how it is. But also, do you really want to watch me um, tediously cut out that paper and measure it and make sure that all the things are right in my world? Um, I didn't really want to watch it and I was making the card, so <laughs> let's just be honest. Okay, I have the happy birthday sentiment down at the bottom of the card and I pulled a piece of um, copy paper out of my drawer that I have cut down to put on the inside of my cards. Unless I'm using a, a white card base, I always add a piece of copy paper on the inside. I just feel like it adds a, a finishing touch. I don't know why. Well, and if you use dark cardstock, then you don't have to use a white gel pen to write on the inside of the card. But there we go. Quick and easy birthday card with Simon Says Stamp Products and Cartabella Pattern Paper. Um, I like how this turned out. I think this could actually have been anything. A birthday card, a hello card, even a sympathy card. It could have been anything. So I hope you enjoyed the card. I hope you liked the video. I have a couple of other videos here that I think you might like as well. I've also added a subscribe button. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. Leave me a thumbs up. Tell YouTube you liked the video. Leave me a comment down below. Do you like the card? And I hope you have a fabulous day.